Mike Zero, X-Ray, X-Ray Tango, a broadcasting station air. Hello, Callum. Ah, welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when you apply a loading coil on an element, very often what you'll find is you had an SWR curve, you know, that looked nice and wide, and you put the loading coil in, you get it all tuned, and it becomes tighter. And, and that, that, that happens, okay? That's <laughs> just the way it is. Now, what I was worried about on the 12.4 is applying this coil and having an unusable bandwidth. It turns out we've got about 100 kilohertz. Um, so, let's go back to the beginning. I've recently done a video about SWR curves, and what I was going to... I forgot to say in that one, but I'll say in this one anyway is that when I make any changes to an antenna, particularly as a doing development, I need to make notes. So it says here on the 80 meter band that my two to one was at 3.65, my 1.5 to one on the low, the low uh, frequency was at 3.679, best was 3.731, and so on up to two to one, which was 3.8. And I can automatically calculate that I've got 102 kilohertz at 1.5 to 1 SWR and about 160 kilohertz at 2 to 1 SWR. As it so happens, I'm really comfortable with those numbers. And I think that's because we put the coil up high. So now I've taken screenshots of the stick. Got my little analyzer here with a known good piece of coax. People in the know will know that I had a piece of coax which wasn't known and didn't work and caused me about a day's worth of problems. However, I took screenshots of those, so I'll put them on, on the screen now and then what I'm going to do, I'll show you what happens actually on the radio, okay? So I've got, I've got the radio here and, and we can, you know, dial up and down. Anyway, so 80 metres is, um, and on this, on this chart here, uh, I'll put it here. That's uh, 250 kilohertz each side. That's why it looks quite a sharp dip, okay? 40 meters is almost as flat as a pancake. You could tune this from 1.2 to 1 SWR from probably 7.1 to 7.3. You know, it, it's massive. I don't know why. Every time I build an antenna with a 40 meter element, bandwidth's always enormous, and I, I genuinely don't understand why. That coil that resonates on the... 80 meter element giving us this kind of five eighths loaded three quarter wave thing on the uh, 30 meter 10.1 mega uh, megahertz that's as flat as a pancake for the whole of uh, 30 meter band 20 is about and it says here on my chart here we've got about 300 kilohertz at 1.5 to 1 each side and also a 500 kilohertz, that's half a megahertz, so it would be from 14 to 14.5 at two to one band edges. So 1.5, I think 300 kilohertz is, is fantastic. Then we got up to 17, 17 is quite a small band, so that's, that's easy, right, to make an element that resonates across the whole of 17. 15 is enormous. However, we've got a couple of tricks that we've installed here. We've got a quarter wave, which is resonant at the bottom end of 21. And then the 40 meter element is giving us a bit of a three quarter wave at the top end of 21. So that's why we get some funny dips here on 21. 12, fantastic. It just so happens that glides all the way past using the 80 meter and the 30 meter coil up through the CB band. Now I don't know what the far field pattern looks like yet, on 11 meters CB, but I think it's it, it should be usable, right? Now, obviously, if you've got a high antenna, like an IMAX 2000 or something like that, you'd be better off sticking it in a tree or up the side of your chimney, but whatever. For DX though, you know, we actually want a bit of an angle, five, six, seven, eight degrees takeoff, and that's what this is giving us. And then on 10 uh, meters, we've got quite a big bandwidth, bigger than any other antenna we've developed. And that's because it's the three quarter wave. And also right at the top end near 29 megahertz, we've got another harmonic starting to kick in on this 80 meter thing. Uh, how well does it work? Well, unbelievable. on 12 meters, I had a fantastic copy the other day, five nine plus with some guy in the US. CQ12, CQ12. A8NY, standing by for any call, over. Hello, this is Mike uh, Zero, X-Ray, X-Ray Tango. Mike Zero, X-Ray, X-Ray Tango, a broadcasting station air. Hello, Callum. 
the line. How are you doing? Ah, very good indeed. I don't have you on the log, certainly this year, but uh, 12 metres is uh, wide open, and I've been listening to you while we've been fiddling around here in a workshop. You're sounding very good, Bob. Uh, yes, it's Callum and Tom, M0RMY, in the shop here. Uh, five nine plus, over. Oh, Callum, Callum. <laughs> Uh, I, I've actually seen your video. I came down last Saturday night, called CQ at 400 watts about one in the morning. I did get a US station. He said that uh, conditions were abysmal and under normal circumstances, he would expect me to be about 10 dB louder. Mike, a zero, X-ray, X-ray, Tango. CQ, over. Uh, K2, R, R, yeah, Kilo 2, Radio, Radio, hello, a very good evening. Uh, I don't know, about five and five, I think. A name here is Cal, Charlie Alpha Lima, over. Now, I was using 400 watts, 10 dB. The difference is would be 40 watts. 40 watts to 400 watts is 10 dB. So on a 100 watt radio, expect to cross the Atlantic minimum on 80 meters in the middle of the night with this element. Now, when you use your analyzer in the field and then come back into your shack, things change, right? Because most modern radios have got an SWR meter in them. By the time you've run through the coax from the feed point to the shack, sometimes you can get a little bit out, the difference between your analyzer and the radio. You gotta remember the whole point, point of this is to keep your radio happy. As long as the SWR isn't huge, as long as your radio's comfortable, it'll pump all those wigglies and most of it, of course, will end up going out into the ether. So I've just set this radio on every band on AM. Now, you've got to remember, I have a special license. I'm allowed to transmit up to 1500 watts without using my call sign, using an industrial license called an innovation and trial license. So don't you do this, all right? And if you do, just be a little bit more careful. I'm only transmitting, it says here, 10 watts, actually. I'll turn that down to five. Chances of me use, uh, causing any, in, in any interference are few and far between. But you can see the curve as I spin the dial. Bottom right on um, this screen, it says meter SWR. So if I go up to the top end of the 80 meter band and hit my send button on this screen here, you will see that I'm reaching two to one SWR. Do you see that? It says two to one on the middle scale. So as I slide down, I think you'll find at the moment it's, I've tuned this for about 3.74. Well, let's find out. So I'll tune down and down and down, down and down and down. Best SWR is about there, 3.73, look. And then if I carry on down further and down further again, 1.5 SWR is at 3.67 on my radio. And that's the bit that counts, isn't it? So it's well over 100 kilohertz on 80 meters. If we move up to seven, the 40 meter band, I'm best tuned at the moment. I just need to cut that much off. I'm best tuned right at the bottom end. But watch this, if I hit the send button and I climb up, I'm, I'm showing no SWR at all as I, sh as I come up the band. And I've got to stop before I hit at three, 7.2, so I'll stop about there. And you can see it was just starting to move. You see, that's just starting to move. As I go down, the meter goes down as well. So 40 meters is fine. The 10 meter band, uh, 30 megahertz, the, uh, 10 megahertz, 30 meter band. <laughs> Uh, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'll just make sure I'm out the way of any notches going on. You can see I've got literally no SWR there. 14 is best from, I'll start at 14066, it says here on the meter. A little bit of SWR, and you can see how it now goes down. Down, down, down. So at 14, I normally like to tune these about 14.2. Then it just starts climbing up the other side, look. And I've got to stop before I hit to three. 50. So there's our 300 kilohertz on uh, on 20 meter band. Make sure there's nothing there. I can't see anything. That is transmit. Transmit and I'm not showing SWR on uh, 17 meters. 21 as you know is absolutely enormous and looks like some good signals knocking around there. And I'll just spin up very quickly. 21 21.2, 21.3, 21.4, and I'll stop. That was the SWR curve. You didn't see any, did you? It's a bit ridiculous. Um, very small 
Um, I think that's some FT8 going on there. So in fact, my, I might have to adjust my 12 meter element. I, I do get a fine tune, but I've moved some stuff around actually about an hour ago. So there we are, 28, I haven't checked this. 28519, not a lot. As you come down and down and down, down and down and down, it starts to creep up at the bottom end of 10. There we are. And that spins up. It starts to rise again at 29.2. So you, very usable. But as I proved with the 12 meter contact, the top end of HF does work. The bottom end of HF does work. All the other elements I'm not worried about because we know that 20, 17, 15, gonna work fine. Good solid quarter waves. And on my next video, I'll do, I'll show you the whisper plots. We are actually getting out. That's the point. There's no dummy load involved here. All right, so it was just to give you a bit of confidence actually that if you bought or have already bought 12.4 signature, that's gonna be the SWR curse for you. So this is really for the 12.4 customers. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.